Hello, I'm Mike Piantek. Welcome to the Skytron UVC robot training video. In this video, we will cover our 3200 flagship robot. This is the most powerful UVC device on the market. Also our single emitter 1140 system and our dual emitter 2280 syndicate system. Now UVC is not a new technology, though this is the next evolution, a single placement surface and air disinfection system. UVC has been used for over 100 years, primarily in water purification and HVAC systems. UVC is effective at inactivating viruses, bacteria, and other pathogens, and thus it can be potentially harmful to the human condition, primarily our skin and eyes though we have several safety features to prevent unintended UVC exposure. Primarily our onboard infrared motion sensors, which will detect motion in the room and not allow you to start a treatment. And additionally, every entrance into a treated room is armed with our door motion module, which once armed and then moved will instantly turn off the UVC treatments. UVC is completely safe to view through standard soda lime glass. As you will be able to see the blue light of the lamps, all that UV energy is blocked and it is completely safe. Our automated dosing technology will tailor the runtime to ensure your treatment area receives a full germicidal dose of UV. In this video, we will cover the remote handheld, which allows users to start a treatment from outside of the treatment room. We will cover the specific hardware overview of all of our robot family, transportation of the robots, how to properly set up a room for treatment, and finally, how to activate the robots. Now, let's go through the important safety warnings and rules for use. First, UVC robots may only be used by a trained and authorized operator. An enclosed, non-occupied area is required, and doors and windows must be closed at all times during operation. Never alter or open a UVC robot unless instructed by a Skytron technician. The only purpose of an IPT robot is for surface and air disinfection. The robots must be operated with a proper ground, Further, never operate a robot on reserve or emergency circuits. If the power cable is damaged, don't operate the robot. Do not modify the electrical power system in any way. Don't use power adapters or power strips, and don't alter the power cord or plug. Don't attempt to alter the structure of the robot, and don't intentionally force open the lamp shutters on the IPT3200. Don't remove the safety labels. Never leave a robot unattended on an incline, even if the brakes are engaged. It's essential to maintain control of the robots during transportation. Only people with the appropriate physical strength should handle this task. Block all horizontal gaps between the floor and the bottom of the door greater than a quarter of an inch. Likewise, block any vertical gaps between doorways through which visible light travels. Use a non-permanent tape like painter's tape. Finally, don't touch the lamp emitters. Oil from your hands will lower the life of the lamp. Next, let's get familiar with your UVC robot's hardware, starting with sensors. Infrared motion sensors will not let a treatment start when there's motion in the room. Once a treatment starts, the sensors turn off. UV sensors allow for an automated runtime, detecting when the scientifically determined endpoint known to destroy particular pathogens has been reached. On the 3200 model, Rotating aluminum shutters protect the lamps. Our field balancing technology will turn three lamps off during any given treatment to focus UV energy where it's needed most, to the larger expanses of the room. Onboard batteries supply additional power for UVC output. The batteries will operate for roughly five hours and have a one-to-one -one charge to time ratio. To charge, the unit must be plugged in when not in use. The 3200 model moves like a shopping cart with two types of brakes on the casters. The blue-green brake stops the wheels from rotating on their vertical axis, keeping them locked in a straight position. The gray brake locks the wheels from moving. 
gently activate or deactivate the brakes with your toe. To safely stow the power cable on the 3200, wrap the cord around the two handles. On the 1140 model, coil the power cord from the point connected to the machine, not the plug end. This will send the coils outward to the freely spinning end instead of the fixed point on the machine, which will, over time, become permanently twisted and tight. Always hang and cinch the door sensor on the door handle or hook device and use one of the sunburst buttons to arm. There are four levels of sensitivity. The top left is the most sensitive and the bottom left is the least sensitive. We recommend always starting with the most sensitive setting and if you experience problems due to strong air pressure or construction vibration, try the next lowest setting. The red button in the center will send a stop command to the device, regardless if it is armed for a particular treatment. To prevent unintended UV exposure, hang a door sensor on every entrance to the room being treated. The DMM is powered by a 3-volt CR2032 button battery and will need to be replaced periodically. When it's time to replace the battery, the LED will blink rapidly when arming the sensor. After the 5-second blinking period, the DMM will operate normally. Refer to the user manual for instructions on replacing the battery. Now, we'll guide you through the handheld, which acts as the ignition of the system and also shows you real-time status during treatment. Devices, handhelds, and door sensors work only with their intended machine and must have matching serial numbers. Because pens and pencils will damage the screen, the handheld's touch screen may only be used with your finger. A rechargeable battery requires charging from the magnetic charging cord. It's best to limit the number of charging cycles to extend battery life. Every three hours, the handheld will make a cellular call to upload all treatment data to our cloud server, Steritrack. During this process, new information such as rooms, users, or Steritrack scheduled jobs is downloaded. The red button in the top left corner turns off the screen and can be used for troubleshooting. Once a treatment is initiated, the handheld can go out of range of the device and automatically reconnect and update the treatment status when back in range. To use your UVC robot, you'll first need to properly prepare the room. We'll start with the patient room. First, raise the bed frame and guardrails. Expose all surfaces. Pull or raise the curtains and rotate the blinds horizontally, stagger drawers and cabinets, recline chairs, and remove the phone from the cradle. The IPT2280 syndicate system should be placed in opposite corners of the room, sandwiching the room between the two devices. Place the UVC robot as centrally as possible at least 18 inches away from furniture and walls. Close the door and hang a do not enter sign. Finally, block any gaps larger than a quarter inch with a bed sheet or painter's tape. To prepare the bathroom, you'll want to expose all surfaces again. Treat the bathroom separately from the main patient room. Lift the toilet seat, push the shower curtain to one side away from the robot. Place the robot at least 12 inches from the shower curtain. Lastly, make sure the shower head is exposed. When preparing the operating room, we need to first clean the room per facility protocol prior to any UV treatment. Then, block all gaps larger than 5 eighths of an inch between the floor and bottom of doors. You should note these areas and plan for it in advance. Ensure all anesthesia equipment will receive direct exposure to the UV light. Drape or hang all tubes, wires, and table controls. This is to make sure they receive optimum UV exposure. In general, maximize the exposure of all surfaces in the room to the light, allowing the disinfection of biological elements. Clear plastic or glass bottles should not be exposed, but white, completely opaque items may. Any water, 
Saline, ultrasound gels, drugs, and other items in plastic bags or bottles must be removed and placed behind glass, such as in a cabinet or covered, possibly in a drawer. Expose computer keyboards, mice, telephones, and other such items. Also, remove all items from flat surfaces, which both exposes the surface and the item itself. Prop items up if possible. Once the room is fully prepped, we can begin activation. First, confirm no person is in the room, then close and secure all doors. From the home screen on the handheld, choose the Select Job button. You'll now see the Job List screen. Create a new job, then choose the room. Using the middle left button on the handheld, scan the barcode attached to the door frame or hinge. Ensure a spore treatment is selected and press Save. From here, make sure the robot is properly positioned in the room. Ensure the target surfaces are exposed, there are no people in the room, the doors are closed and the sensors are armed, and the Do Not Enter sign is posted. Select the number of door sensors in use and select Start. Before treatment begins, you need to enter your PIN. Never use another person's PIN. Don't ever enter the room, even if the lights are off, until you see the completed message on the handheld. To show the job completed screen, start and schedule a vegetative treatment for a short treatment duration. Each trainee should have a chance to create a new job, initiate a new job, delete an old job, and stop a treatment, either with the handheld or door sensor. Now, let's go over manual and automatic data replication. With adequate cellular service, data will automatically be replicated every three hours. Data will also automatically replicate after each completed treatment. You can manually sync data, assuming you have a cellular signal, at any time by selecting Sync Now from the menu. Let's talk maintenance. All preventative maintenance is monitored and performed by Skytron. Additionally, you can dust the machine with a dry microfiber cloth and wipe the cord with a paper towel and Windex. Now, let's go over what you can do if your robots don't seem to be functioning properly or have a slow connection. First, try resetting the device by removing the power plug, waiting 10 seconds, and plugging it back in. Do this with both emitters if you're using a 2280 syndicate. If this doesn't solve the problem, contact your department manager or call Skytron at 1-800-SKYTRON. The Steratrack web application tracks all configuration information and job data for the UVC units and remote handhelds, syncing data between Steratrack and the handhelds over the internet. Starting with the dashboard, you'll see charts showing the number of scheduled and completed jobs in the system. The charts include jobs for the current facility from the current and previous week. On the Jobs tab, you'll see all jobs in the system and their last known status. Sort by selecting any column header. The Facilities screen keeps track of all facilities configured in Steratrack. Each facility in the system corresponds to a physical building for a particular hospital or hospital system. Go to the Rooms screen to see all rooms and their corresponding scanner codes in the current facility. You'll be able to enter room information at the push of a button. To import a number of rooms to a facility quickly and efficiently, use the Room Import screen. Create a CSV file in Microsoft Excel, then import it to Steratrack. On the Reports screen, you can search and filter jobs by a number of criteria, as well as export a job report to an Excel or CSV file. To see all user accounts in Steratrack, go to the Users screen. Each user account can be configured with individual security permissions that control which areas of Steratrack a user can view or edit. To access the Statistical Analysis link, you'll need to log in again using your same Steratrack login information. Here, you can generate treatment statistics within any date range for facility and device treatment quantity and operation time. If used properly, the Skytron UVC robot will safely disinfect the air and surfaces in any room in your facility while permanently tracking and storing digital documentation. For more information, 
visit us at Skytron.com or call us at 1-800-SKYTRON.